Rock Solid Radio wants to thank Maxwell Construction, who has been our sponsor since the very beginning. For over 30 years, Maxwell has delivered the highest quality projects by holding to their core values of customer satisfaction, positive attitude, respect, and excellence. So if you have any kind of commercial construction need, give Maxwell Construction a call today at 812-537-2200. Welcome to Rock Salad Radio. I'm Linda Hutchinson with my love of my life, my one and only, the man above all men. Um, That's r- gross. <laughs> you never talk to me that way. You can tell you're on camera. You're just trying to put up a show. Oh, honey. I bet I bet people listen to this way we start the show half the time and go, oh my oh, gosh, these people. Honey, you you can compl- really. You compl- I'm your old man. You're my old lady. You, you complete me. You complete me. I completely. Yeah. I completely complete me. <laughs> actually, no, you do not complete me. That's actually complete. Wait, who me. does complete you? Actually, that's what we're talking about today. Is that y- mm-hmm. y- even though that was a great movie line, that's not reality. And you're an awesome man, but I've got to be careful not to stick you in that God shaped in, in, in that hole. <laughs> stick me in the hole in that God shaped hole that we're talking about today. That's our the topic. God shaped hole. See, th- yeah. that's that's not terminology I would use. What do you mean? Uh, uh, the God shaped hole. That's, I use a lot. I know because that's a woman sort of thing. It is. Oh, I have a God shaped hole. But we're going to get into exactly how it's mm. meant. Obviously, would speak you can tell it. that I picked the topic or, or yeah. the, the name of the. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's it is pretty often that when we're talking about something, mm-hmm. um, you will use terminology to describe it your way, and I'll be like, "Oh, <laughs> us, us guys, we wouldn't talk about it that way." And it doesn't uh, mean you couldn't do it either way. But it is funny how um, mm-hmm. certain things just seem to click. Uh, based off of how you understand things, and so male and female. But the bottom line <laughs> is, um, I don't complete you. You're right. right? And, I, and I'm you're not, not enough. You're not meant to complete. I'm not. Uh, there's actually so what a, does There's actually you? a book in there that um, I've been writing in my head for the last decade. How's that going? What chapter are you on? <laughs> and uh, it is, I don't even want to give the title away because I literally write it in my Bible when I see a verse or a, another reminder of why this book is so important. So I'm going to get there someday. So yeah, it's well, all about this. It's definitely, we're definitely going to be talking about it. And actually, so to be clear, we're going to be talking about this challenge that is not just in our marriages, but is in us as individuals. Mm. And we're going to roll it actually out into what is going to be like three parts, yeah. okay? Because um, part of it is learning to understand it how it um, relates to you. Mm -hmm. You might think that you don't have a hole or a void or an emptiness, but I guarantee that you do. Mm. I guarantee that you do. And as we go through our conversation, you'll start to see how you have tried to Mm -hmm. fulfill it in various ways. Um, And so it's not a matter of holier than thou. It's a matter of, man, we're always trying to get a little bit more complete, content, satisfied, whatever you Mm -hmm. want to call it. And when we're not there, it creates an anxiety or a tension in us. Yeah. And so anyway, we're going to roll this out into um, several shows. And uh, we're going to have a guest on our last mm-hmm. show that mm-hmm. actually speaks of how he tried to fill mm-hmm. the hole yes. or the void yeah. uh, where he tried to fill it. And, mm-hmm. you know, again, he's not by himself. Many have, and but his yes. was very costly. Yeah. So, but before we do that, we want to thank our sponsors. We want to thank Casey's Outdoor Solution and Maxwell Construction for their support of Rock Solid Radio here, what we're doing here, but also the parent ministry of rock solid families and so if that is something that you're unfamiliar with if this is the first time you're tuning in we'd love for you to check out our website rocksolidfamilies.org and if there's something that we can help you with in your family as we kind of break this out and have these conversations this is a faith-based ministry we believe that god and his word are at the center of everything we do and we are here to glorify his name and so um, if that's something that intrigues you and this is something a, a topic that has really kind of um, been brought to your attention, then we would love to have more of a conversation with you. Um, I think part of the conversation needs to include how wealthy we are and Mm. how poor we are in Mm. this country at the same time, and we don't 
often even recognize what the why. And you why don't, are you're we? not even talking about money poor. Yeah. yeah. And well, I am talking about wealthy in terms of money, mm-hmm. but poor in terms right. of emotional health, yes. spiritual health. And I think if we just ignore that, we continue to chase the same rabbits that we chase. Mm-hmm. The idea here is here we sit in one of the, the most uh, prosperous nations in the world, and we lead the we lead the league in depression and suicide mm-hmm. and drug use and murder and, and all of these things. And we're mm-hmm. like, how can we be so rich, rich according to the world and yet so poor? Yes. And, um, you know, the, the, not that we carry the answer, but we're going to talk about... Mm-hmm. Who does carry the answer? Yeah, and we see that walking in our doors every day. Those who maybe by the world standards have the world by the tail, but they're coming in with their tail between their legs and they're just feeling hopeless, feeling overwhelmed, feeling helpless. And so they come into us and maybe monetarily have everything they want, but yet they're really seeking and searching and struggling. And so um, if that's you, reach out to us. Reach out to us at rocksolidfamilies.org, or you can call our office at 812-576-ROCK. Um, I just, as we were talking about it, I want to talk about sometimes the emptiness in our marriages. Mm -hmm. And so Lynn and I have put together Rock Solid Marriages, which is an Mm -hmm. online program that involves you getting the opportunity to figure out uh, the voids that you have, the holes that you have, and how we can help you figure out how to fill those. Mm -hmm. And so uh, if you're interested in uh, improving the quality of your marriage and filling that marriage with with, um, greater contentment and joy than you've ever had, then reach out to us again at rocksolidfamilies.org and let's get you rolling on that. Okay, so let's talk about this God-shaped hole because you're making fun of it. Well, uh, how is God (laughs) shaped, first off? I mean, that's always the thing that comes to my mind. Like, how is he shaped? Is he like... So, you know, basically, in other words, we're talking about, is there such a thing biblically as this void or vacuum in our soul and our spirit that can only be filled by God? Like, is it, is God shaped whole in the Bible? And so... (laughs) I've not found it. Where is it at? Well, and and really, where did it come from? Because Mm -hmm. I have heard that, you know, we became, um, we were raised in the church, but came to know the Lord in a personal way in our early 30s. And so um, this was a phrase I've heard a lot, especially going back to the seminary and getting my master's degree. And um, it's not directly in the Bible. So we're not here to tell you, you know, there's an actual, you know, vacuum or hole in your heart. But it does come back way back into the 1600s by a philosopher, a theologian by the name of Blaise Pascal. Oh, Blaise. I mean, <laughs> Pascal Laws, yeah. the Pascal Wager. And so, yeah. See? Oh, very good. You just know Talk. your philosophy there. Well, he was a French. Well, he wasn't just a philosopher. He was mm-hmm. a scientist, mathematician. Yeah. Yep. Uh, I mean, yep. he, was a, he was a dude, man. Yeah. And so back in a very small book that he wrote, he quoted this, which I, I love, and it says, what else does this craving and this helplessness proclaim that there was once in a man a true happiness of which all that now remains is an empty print and trace? This he tries in vain to fill with everything around him, seeking in things that are not there, the help he cannot find in those that are, though none can help. Since this infinite abyss can be filled only with an infinite and immutable object, in other words, by God himself. Mm -hmm. And so he talks about this God-shaped hole, that this abyss Mm -hmm. that we will try our best to fill in other ways, but it's that relationship with the Lord. It's that um, surrender to the Lord that creates this... Um, yearning that our heart's desiring. Yeah. Well, I mean, Solomon talks all about it, mm-hmm. right? I mean, Solomon, the wisest man that ever lived, mm-hmm. had all of the riches and all of the power mm-hmm. and all of the smarts and all of the wisdom, and he had all of that, yeah. and he he exploited it, right? He used it for mm-hmm. power and control and all these things and just kept coming up empty. Mm-hmm. And he finally kind of boils it down to this hole that you're talking mm-hmm. about. And, you know, these Psalms are so important because we get to see how he was frustrated mm. and how he was craving. And these cravings don't go away. Like, mm-hmm. Actually, uh, Dr. Andrew uh, Huberman is a, uh, is a uh, researcher from Stanford, and his, his line of work is all about um, 
the uh, how the psychology and the um, the biochemistry of the brain. And there's only one reward system in the brain, and that is the dopamine reward mm, system. Mm-hmm. And so his he does this whole line of all of his research is in dopamine, and he talks about the cravings. Mm. And the cravings are actually our desire um, to, it is the actual craving that creates the dopamine. In other words, it's my desire hmm. to have something more than actually receiving it. Wow. He, he talks about the- it's the pursuit. It, yes, it's the pursuit. It's huh. the, like you're, you're looking to buy a car, you're looking wow. to buy a house, and it's the actually going out and shopping. <laughs> Which I and like. That, that, <laughs> that, that gets you going. Mm. And he, he talks about- Seconds after you sign your name, mm, that's the true. dopamine stops being like, produced. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Buyer's and, remorse. It, but yeah. <laughs> and, and he talks about how it is the pursuit, the craving mm. that we're constantly trying to that's fill. That's crazy. So there's a biochemical connection there. And so dopamine production is highest in pursuit. Whenever you're okay. in pursuit. So wow. when you're in pursuit huh. of, of your lady. You're right? really kind of showing this biology background oh, that you've got go. there. The depth, <laughs> your anatomy the depth and physiology. Was crazy. Well, how about let's go to Solomon and Ecclesiastes where he says in Ecclesiastes 3.11, he has made, the Lord, has made everything beautiful in its time. He has also set eternity in the human heart Mm. yet no one can fathom what god has done from beginning to end and so it's like he has set eternity in our human heart like there's a yearning of something more than this earth you know the bible talks about it Mm. this this life of ours is literally just a tent it's temporary Mm. and that this is this place this earth is not our home and so there is this yearning this desire for something more and and so i i believe in that and so we really need to pursue that and what what's going to bring that fulfillment but i let's read jeremiah 17 9 hmm. because jeremiah 17 9 tells us how we go off the rails yes yes so in 17 9 it talks about the heart is deceitful above Ooh. all things and beyond cure and so when we're talking about heart we're talking about the desire mm-hmm. and so the desire like because i'm actually just seeking this dopamine hit mm. all right it is, I will get it any way I can get it, Yeah. right? And that's where pornography and money mm. and drugs yeah. and, and power, that's where all these things come because the heart is actually deceitful. The heart yeah. is not necessarily always a true rudder to to good things. Right, yeah. I mean, so, and, and if we allow our emotions and our opinions and our heart kind of pull us into things that we know are against God's word or against what you know, otherwise counsel says, then we're just kind of just following that, you know, whatever it is that fills us for that moment, Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So there's two disclaimers that I want to mention before we go any further, because there's really some criticism about the the term God-shaped hole. Mm -hmm. And so I just want to make sure we clarify in what we're saying and what we're not saying. So one of the disclaimers is even if you reject Jesus, and you're happy and content, as you say, in your life here, it doesn't negate the fact that Jesus is still the way, the truth, and the life, and Mm -hmm. that no one gets to the Father or to heaven without him. And so um, we believe heaven requires us to surrender our way for his way. And so, you know, John 14, 6 says, I am the way, the truth, and life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So I believe his word. And Mm -hmm. so I know that even if you're happy right now and you don't know Jesus, I still believe there is this God-shaped hole that you don't even maybe know. You've stuffed it with so many things, you don't even realize that there is this need to be truly satisfied. Mm -hmm. Can I maybe add to that? Because this is a kickback that you will get from um, just people questioning faith or maybe even somebody who's an atheist they might say so you're telling me i can't be happy Mm. without Hmm. christ and you know i i think we have to be careful there one we have to define happiness Mm -hmm. and joy and contentment right we have to define those but i also think we have to look at the actual research Mm. Mm. and the research shows that people of faith have a higher level of joy in their life, mm-hmm. overall contentment. Mm-hmm. And so, again, even people of, of faith can can be deceited by their mm-hmm. heart, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, mm-hmm. so so it's, it doesn't mean it's a go-to guarantee ticket because none of us are perfect. But, 
Yeah, you can you can get happiness and contentment. Mm-hmm. You can learn to manage dopamine uh, mm-hmm. f- receptors in the brain, and you can do the physical work to do that. But on an ongoing basis, and we're going to talk a little bit about this later, like mm-hmm. um, the I call them my essential eights. Mm-hmm. We're going to talk about, well, there are certain things there that have mm-hmm. to be satisfied, and humans can't satisfy them. Mm-hmm. Okay, and, right. and and one of those emotional needs is is one that can't be provided mm-hmm. for fully by humans, right. and and that's where we get into trouble. So yeah. yes, an atheist, so to speak, <laughs> could find a level of happiness, right. but by and large, you will find them struggling more to to seek and and then actually find that level of contentment. Yeah. And so the second part of this disclaimer is really kind of correcting what I just said before. We're never going to be completely satisfied in this life. Mm as a human, okay? As much as we will seek to be more like him and to, you know, find that contentment in him, there's going to be a yearning and there's just putting Christ in the center of your life is not the same as like rubbing a magic lamp Mm. and having genie pop out and give you your three wishes. Like it's not going to mean that there's not going to be tough days. And so the Bible says also, Jesus says that I, in this world, you will have trouble but take heart. I have overcome the world. So our goal is not for everything to be perfect and rosy in our life. It's eternity is the, is, is really where that perfection is going to be reached. That total satisfaction is going to be reached. So that's my goal in life is, is, you know, I've got to hold on to these things and realize Mm -hmm. that that's going to bring me more peace. Um, but that we still are going to have troubles in this world. We had a guest on our Strong Dads podcast, um, Tony Schroeder, who's um, a gentleman that both of mm-hmm. us know, and he's very um, much in trying to just build faith in our in our community and and, mm-hmm. and others and people. And he talks about um, he didn't really find a level of he didn't think he could get content until he started to understand. Um, that he had a an eternal concept of life mm-hmm. rather mm-hmm. than uh, a finite. Mm-hmm. And so finitely, it's like I have to get things done by a certain time, right? Mm-hmm. And if I don't get this done, like if I'm not a good person by the time I die, I'm done, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And he's like, when I finally realized that I'm living for eternity, mm-hmm. I'm living for an eternal view, mm-hmm. it really started to make sense. Like, yeah, um, I can't sit there and wrap my head around why there's cancer, Mm -hmm. why there's pain and suffering here. Um, But I have to have that eternal hope. Right. And, you know, that that does mean that your body's going to break down. Oh, Lord, yes, it is. (laughs) You know, what I've noticed on Strong Dads, you just do a lot of complaining about your body falling apart. Well, because I'm sitting next to a 32 year old who comes in every day and he's all strapping strong and he does uh, nothing, nothing at all to do that. And you, we usually our studio is down in the basement uh, of our house. And I, as I walk down, he's always pushing me down the stairs because my knees won't go fast enough for him. So by the time I'm, it's uh, fresh in my mind. By the time he and Kyle, I are recording, he, he, he's a little jealous of you know your not young, jealous. strong, healthy not body jealous. that you do I nothing a, to work on. I have a God shaped <laughs> hole and Kyle's not filling it. <laughs> no, but you know, it is it is a reminder that, you know, we're going to lose people we love. Mm. You are going to come on hard times. Hurricanes are going to hit your home. Mm. You know, you are going to get cancer diagnosis. But that just because a square peg can't fit in a round hole doesn't mean that God is not working and that he can't bring, like you said, that level of satisfaction that we can experience on this earth. It'll just never be at completion mm. until we see the Lord face to face. Yeah. And let's talk about this um, also a little bit from a finite aspect. So some people might think that, you know, so you're telling me I can fill this hole and once I do, I'm good to go. Mm. Right. And I I think that that's a misnomer as well because it's not a one and done. It's not a one and done. It's, it's daily bread. Yes. Right. Because life constantly consumes energy Mm -hmm. and you have to grab energy and go back at it. And so it's an ongoing process. And it's not like you can one day just say, I have arrived. (laughs) My tank is full. I am complete. Like these are things that I sometimes think that people want to have that guarantee that, you know, I can go to the gas station, get 
filled up once, mm-hmm. and you know that's what we want with these electric vehicles, right? <laughs> I can fill up, and I'll be good forever. Yeah. And, the, and the idea here is, is life takes energy, and so yeah. we're going to constantly be having to pursue and then refill. Oh, and, man. and so you might have it today. You might yeah. feel like, man, today, like I am on the money. Mm. And then two weeks from now, you could be devastated by something and yeah. you feel like I'm at the bottom right now. That is so funny that you bring that up because it makes me fe- remind myself of the Israelites when they were being freed from Egypt, right? Moses is leading them out of captivity, hundreds and hundreds of years of captivity. And they're bringing in, they're coming to the promised land. Okay. Mm. And I feel like this is a microcosm. I believe it's a microcosm microcosm of um, really uh, what God is preparing us for Mm -hmm. being brought to the promised land of eternity. And so when they were coming out into through the desert, they were literally complaining Mm. about not having food. And they're like, well, it was better off when we were slaves in Egypt because at least we had meat to eat and all this stuff. And it's yeah. like, wow, how quickly you forget the the captivity and the persecution that you experience. And so God, what does he do in his infinite wisdom? He gives them manna, which literally means what is it coming from heaven? Mm-hmm. And it's laying on the ground. And I love that what you said. It's like every day they had to go out and gather up the manna. For food, and if they gathered up more than one day, what happened to it? It would rot. It would rot. It couldn't be stored even for yeah. uh, over the day, yeah. right? It would rot. And he, w- they were even told, do not mm-hmm. hoard the manna, because, except for the day of rest. Except for the day yeah. of rest. Yeah. And so you know, you and you know, I can just see this is human nature, <laughs> right? As soon as you're not looking, I'm putting a couple extra yeah. pieces in my Save pouch. It. Yeah. And and uh, again, then I can sleep in tomorrow. And we're gonna, we'll speak more as to why I would even do that, mm-hmm. right? And and. Don't fool yourself for a second to think that that's not in you because mm-hmm. there are emotional needs that are taking place that are scaring the bejesus out of you hmm. and you're going to try to fulfill them in other ways yep. other than God's manner. You're going to try to make your uh, attempts, your physical attempts to fulfill yourself. Yeah. So hon, let's go down the road and we're just going to kind of scratch the surface this week about your essential eight. You kind of mentioned it a, mm-hmm. a few minutes ago, but kind of give us a little bit of a broad stroke on what you mean by the essential eight. Well, and so I'll go through this because you, you use the phrase God filled or God sized whole, and I'm going to actually put words to what makes up that whole. Okay. Okay. And because I, I think it's important that you put words to it. Otherwise, it's just like, well, what do you mean this whole? What, well, what do I put in this whole? Well, we can actually identify what makes up the whole. Hmm. Okay. And so I, hmm. I want to go back for a second, hun, and compare it again to first, before we get started, compare it to the calories that we need. So food is one of our physical necessities, mm-hmm. food, water, shelter. Those are physical necessities. And we know that we have to have a certain minimum to survive and then and we can mm-hmm. have more to survive more abundantly, right. okay? And, and so emotional needs are in the same vein in terms of how we fulfill them. Everyone has a minimal need mm-hmm. of these areas that we're going to talk about that create a hole if mm-hmm. they're not served well. But some of us will have different even levels that we have to have more so. So, for instance, like if I talk about calories, you might be able to survive off of 1,500 calories a day. But (laughs) me, because I'm a big strapping man. (laughs) There's a difference between surviving and enjoying, right? So So. I might need 3,000 calories a day, right? At yeah, least I'm I try sure to convince I overtake myself. my calorie count. But the idea here is which one's right? Well, mm-hmm. neither is right. They're they're very separate to our own person. Right. Okay. And so, but we both have to have calories. Mm-hmm. We both have to have those. And so that understanding of uh, and, and my calories will even vary within the day. Mm. Yesterday I sat around. Today I'm out <laughs> working. All right. And so I'll have to have even more. And that's why it's a daily bread. Mm-hmm. Okay. So when you think of it like this, now let's talk about there are eight essential areas. And you can read different areas and they'll sometimes call them emotional needs. And you, they're usually six, seven, eight, nine or so of these things. Um, but in the work that I do, this is how I've kind of grouped them mm-hmm. together to say, Pretty much, I can I can put 
any uh, struggle you have, I can put them mm. in one of these categories. So I would encourage you guys to, if you're listening, to go get a piece of paper because yeah. I have found these super um, important, super um, helpful to have just because of, like you said, if you have a marriage issue mm. that you're struggling with and all of a sudden you're like, okay, what is not being met here? What is? What right. am I needing? How can I put this into words? It's very helpful to have this list. It's kind of your go-to of, of really what's what's missing in my life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and just a quick little uh, note, Kyle and I just did a show about money mm -hmm. and how money mm. is used often to fulfill the things I'm getting ready to talk about. Yeah. Okay, so right. we, we talked quite a bit about that in mm -hmm. that show, so that's on Strong Dads on episode 167. Yeah. But So here are the areas, okay? These are the emotional... But don't give them all away because we're doing two yeah. parts, right? Are we going to list them yeah, all? Yeah, well, I, I can, I'll list them, but okay. we're not going to discuss them. Okay. 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 So the um, the emotional eight, th these are the essential eight. Okay. The essential eight. Everybody needs control in their life. Everybody needs respect. Everybody needs love. Everybody needs trust. Every relationship is based mm -hmm. on trust. Okay. And we know in our marriage work, man, yep. when we break trust, whew, all bets mm -hmm. are off in terms of how well or quickly we can restore. Everybody needs security. Mm. Everybody needs affection or that human interaction, and that can look different for different people, but we need to have that human interaction. Everybody needs purpose. I have to know why I get up mm. every day, okay? And finally, everybody needs faith. Mm. Everybody needs faith. Now, this faith one, we're going to get into that a whole lot more, but that faith deal is really where this is where we have to understand where God comes in. Mm. Everyone, even the atheist, has faith. Mm -hmm. The question is, what do you put your faith in? Mm. And if I'm the atheist, I got to start with putting my faith in me, mm. systems, government, mm. you know, um, employment, right? All of those come up short quickly. Oh, yeah. Like, you don't want to put faith in me. Well, you do, <laughs> but you know. Well, you but, complete me, remember? You complete me, right? <laughs> and so, again, mm. these are the essential eights. And when we have a breakdown, in other words, if I'm hungry and I don't have enough calories, I'm going to get alarms going off. Mm. I'm going to get hunger pains. I'm going to be grouchy. I'm going to be all these different things. If one of these areas are not being fulfilled at the level that I need it to be fulfilled, I will get tension in me, and we call mm. it anxiety. Mm. I call it fear. Oh. I call it anger. I call it depression. And so any- Hopelessness. Hopelessness, right? Yeah. And any one of these essential eights, mm. right? So it's very important when you're working through this, um, you actually take the time and go, where am I in this area, mm. All right? And, and like, it even depends on the setting. Okay, like around home here, hun, you want to have more control because you're much better at taking care of the calendars and the kids <laughs> yep. and, and making sure. All that. And I'm like, oh, you just tell me where to go. <laughs> okay, but there's other areas in my life where you don't care as much about, but I care about. Mm -hmm. Like, I want to make sure that the tractor's running, right? <laughs> or that the yard's being taken care of, or those kind of things. And so, I don't even know how to start the tractor. Right. <laughs> so it's just a matter of, oh, mm -hmm. I, I really need to understand how this works mm -hmm. for me. And, and my partner and spouse. So yeah, anyway, yeah. that's kind of the deal. So yeah, so we're going to unpack those in our next episode of The Essential Eight, but we wanted to kind of give you a glimpse of what we're going to be talking about because I do think these are really core and we're going to kind of unpack them as far as with our kids and with our marriage and ourselves. And so we hope that you'll stay tuned for next week's episode. Uh, but, you know, in the meantime, the God-shaped hole is not an actual vacuum um, in the human heart, but it is a condition that when we have this yearning for something Thing that we can never be fully satisfied by it's because it's it's eternal mm. and it's only going to be satisfied when we see the lord face to face and so we want as many people to be there with us in heaven and that is only going to come through a surrender process where we replace whatever we're trying to fill it with with a re personal intimate relationship with the lord so we hope that helps i'm sure it maybe stirs up some some emotion inside you that maybe some unsettled spirit that you've been having and didn't really know why maybe it's the lord prompting you to draw in and lean into him and uh really seek that relationship hun i got to share a story with you 
before we close. And um, it really comes from a, a student of mine that as a young child, you had her in the elementary school. Mm. And um, she was raised in a, a Buddhist home. And so a really non-practicing, there was really no faith mm. for this young woman. And um, her mom had a major aneurysm and was in a coma. And in the elementary school, there was a young girl, a classmate, who um, told her, well, I'll be praying for your mama. I'll be praying for your mom. And this girl started to kind of seek out, like, what do you mean? Who are you praying to? Hmm. And like, who is this God you're talking about? And so through her mother being ill and through this desire to want to help her mom, she started to pursue her own personal relationship with Christ. Mm. And so it comes down, it's a long story, but her mom came out of that coma and her mom didn't even speak English. She mm. is, is Asian descent and her mom didn't even speak English. But in that translation, she told her daughter that she had seen God in a dream and and for this young girl it was almost like confirmation that god was with her that god mm. did hear her prayer and and answered her cry and so now she's an adult woman she's mm. married living in you know out of state and i just got a chance to reconnect with her recently and to hear the ripple effect of mm. her desire her yearning for something that she didn't even know what it was called she didn't even know about this god and there was a friend in her classroom that shared the hope of the gospel with her shared about jesus who hears you and sees you and knows what you need and now she's an adult and, and just we just celebrated together as we talked the ripple effect of her faith and her learning about god to family members and friends and now her spouse it was just such a beautiful picture of the gospel and, and that God-shaped hole that only Christ can fill. Mm. It was really cool. Yeah, I remember at a very young age, she was craving, Yes, right? She was craving, she needed answers. Yes. And so not that she received the single answer that's going to make mm. her complete for life, but she received the way that yes. she finds her manna. And it was so funny because she heard about God's word. And so I got her a Bible. And again, no one in her family um, really had a Bible or even spoke English. And Actually, so they kind of rejected it they from the did. way I they remember They really that rejected story. it. But she and I would study the Bible together. And I remember, I, I, I kind of forgot, we're starting at square one. And she read the whole book of Genesis. And I remember meeting with her and she was kind of half in tears and frustrated. And I said, what's wrong? And she said, I read this whole book. And she's like, not once did I read about Jesus because she started in Genesis. <laughs> and so here I was like, wow, I got to start in square one, right? Mm -hmm. Of where will we find Jesus? And about his story. And mm. so, you know, there are people out there, people around you that are hungry. They don't even know what they're hungry for. And so that manna, that daily bread is Jesus, is God's word. And so please, please do not ignore those cries of our heart that can only be satisfied by him. All right. Very good. So next week, you got to tune in because next yeah. week we're going to go ahead and break down the actual emotional or the essential eight of the emotional mm -hmm. needs. And we're gonna actually talk about how we go about fulfilling them. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna give you very clear examples of how we oftentimes use our human yeah. methods to fulfill them <laughs> and how that is contrary to how God is asking us. And when we do yeah. it God's way, how a whole different level of completion comes in. So we're gonna actually give practical examples of how we help fulfill those things, okay? Yeah. Um, all right, so let's thank all of our, yeah. our uh, listeners out there again. Hey, guys, we we do this because we believe it's of, of help and support to families and marriages and individuals, but we need your help. Mm -hmm. We need your help in spreading the word. And so please, as you listen to the show and something um, strikes you, please share the show. Uh, mm -hmm. Give us five-star ratings. Uh, write a comment. You know, these are things that just, one, it helps us know that you guys are out there listening, but two, mm -hmm. that uh, it increases its likelihood of being found on the search engine. So please help us with that. Mm -hmm. Also, we want to thank our sponsors. Uh, we mm -hmm. want to thank Maxwell Construction and Casey Outdoor mm -hmm. Solutions for the support that they give us here at Rock Solid Families and Rock Solid Radio. So, hon, why don't you, you know, have a craving to close us out? <laughs> thank you so much for listening to Rock Solid Radio, building a stronger community community, one family at a time. Make it a great day. 
Rock Solid Radio wants to thank Casey's Outdoor Solutions. Casey's is a premier garden center and gift shop located in Lawrenceburg, Indiana. They offer a wide selection of high quality plants, landscaping materials, and home decor. They do amazing high quality work and can help you transform your indoor and outdoor living spaces into something beautiful. So stop by Casey's Outdoor Solutions today and let them know you appreciate their support for Rock Solid Radio. Visit Casey's today at 21481 State Line Road, Lawrenceburg, Indiana.